Next up on WTV, asynchronous and synchronous learning, school supplies donations, and today's Sports Minute. WTV's daily update starts now. Hey there, Red Hawk Nation. Today is Tuesday, August 18th, and I'm Melissa Murphy with today's daily update, brought to you by Wingspan TV. With the next three weeks of schooling taking place online, asynchronous and synchronous learning have become the new norm for students. WTV's Cooper Regal has the details. With the first few weeks of school being online, and for some students, the rest of the year after that, schoolwork will be done differently than ever before and differently than the spring. So I think this year one of the biggest things for kids is learning the difference between synchronous and asynchronous. If you participated in e-learning last year, that was all asynchronous, which means kids worked at their own pace at their own time. I know for a lot of high schoolers you loved it because you could sleep till noon and you could work late at night. But for a lot of kids they struggled when they needed help, they felt like they couldn't reach their teacher, or they felt like going to watch a video or following something didn't give them the same instruction that they got from their teacher. So for that we've added elements of synchronous learning, and that's when your teacher is expecting you to meet with them on, on a virtual platform. So all students that are in a virtual academy can expect times every day where they're asked to check in with their teacher, they may be given notes from their teacher, their teacher may walk them through an activity, or the teacher may be available for, to help them along the way. That part of the learning is going to be synchronous. If you're working from home, the teacher may say, okay, the rest of the class period, these are the activities I want you to work on. That part of the day is asynchronous where the kids can move away from their computer and go work at their own pace. For students such as Junior Kyle Wilkins, the new system is preferable. I prefer the way they're doing online school this year compared to last year just because since it's a new year, um, I think it's cool how on Zoom we get to meet like all of our classmates and our teachers. Instead, how last year like we just kind of did assignments on Canvas without really any Zoom meetings. So I just think it helps um, build relationships early on in the year. Reporting for WTV, I'm Cooper Regal. Frisco ISD is providing school supply kits for families in need. WTV's Zane Romani has the details. The Frisco ISD Community Relations Team recently launched a back-to-school campaign to provide necessary school supplies, such as backpacks and service vouchers, to students in need of financial support. To aid in this effort, community members can provide a strong start for students by purchasing school supply kits for $7.50 and backpacks for $4.50. They can also purchase service vouchers, which include vouchers from area businesses for student-athlete physicals, hearing slash vision screenings, haircuts, discounts to businesses, and even ice skating vouchers. Purchases can be made by September 8th. For more information, visit the Frisco ISD website. Reporting for WTV, this is Zane Romani. As COVID continues to threaten school athletics, WTV's TJ Krolowitz talks to cross-country head coach Ben Manning about he's adjusted in today's Sports Minute. There is still doubt looming over cross-country season as the first day of competition, September 7th, creeps closer. Um, we understand when they're running, you can't or you don't necessarily have to have the mask on, but if you're just stretching, if you're just you know, getting your water, you have to have the mask on at all times. Another thing is like normally we would run in these big clumps. We've tried to say you start this way and you guys start that way or maybe a staggered start. Um, so just finding ways to try to keep them distanced um, when they don't have the mask on when they're actually running. Keeping the Red Hawk runners focused and prepared is something Manning is trying to do with each practice. You know like cross country is so much about you know the camaraderie and just uh, the brotherhood of it and everything like that and it's it's there, it's kind of been taken away in a sense, but I know that um, you know we, we've implemented a couple of these Saturday practices that we haven't normally done in the past, just to like have some more fun and get to know each other a little bit better since some of our time got cut short, and uh, you know just trying to build that bond despite everything that's gone on this this spring and summer. Manning is optimistic that cross country will have its season this fall. I'm very hopeful, and I think. Uh, once September hits and, the, and everybody comes back to school, that's, that's coming back to school, and uh, our first meet is scheduled for September 12th, and once I actually see how the meets are gonna work, I'll have a little bit better idea, but man, I, I sure hope so. Reporting for WTV, this is TJ Krillowitz. If you are looking for more from Wingspan, you can follow us at Liberty Wingspan on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook, 
or visit our award-winning website, libertywingspan.com. And now for today's announcements. For any announcements, have your club sponsor email libertywingspanstaff at gmail.com. That's it for today's daily update. This is Alyssa Murphy for Wingspan TV.